dudes? What is happening? It is uh, Trent Kanuga here. And uh, today I've got for you a new Sketchbook Pro drawing of Major Motoko Kusanagi from the Legendary Ghosts in the Shell series. This image is sponsored by Sketchbook Pro and Autodesk. It will be featured in a upcoming artist spotlight feature that we shot. They flew me out to Toronto and uh, did a, uh, a video shoot, kind of followed me around, felt like a movie star for a couple of days, uh, hanging out with this awesome film crew as they asked me all kinds of prodding questions about my secret life of a traveling kind of a digital artist in the modern age. Look at these guys. We're having too much fun. We're having too much fun on that job. Had a great time in uh, Toronto, took a bunch of selfies, took a bunch of reference images, and most importantly, I got a chance to sit down at a couple of cafes and uh, work on this painting for Ghost in the Shell. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about uh, why I do it and uh, what were the intentions behind it, because it's not exactly the major that you've seen before, now is it? Mm -mm. I made a deal with you guys a little while back that if I'm going to do a, uh, a drawing of something that already exists, I'm going to give it a little bit of a tweak, a little bit of a, uh, just something extra, something different, my own take on it, something fresh, something new. Got to trinify it, trinify it up. And uh, the way that I tend to start a piece is I pull up a lot of reference imagery. And in this case, I, I sort of just roughed out the composition, your thumbnails. If you get a chance to check out my thumbnail tutorial, my thumbnail tips, video that I just recently posted. I'll give you some ideas on uh, fixing your composition before you go and invest a bunch of time into doing a painting. Another thing to keep in mind if you're doing something where you've got a lot of mechanical design or you know that you're going to be working with machinery or something that's going to have some symmetry but it's at a little bit of a skewed angle or something like that, you could actually build a little bit of uh, geometry, some basic symmetry or some basic cylinders or spheres in a 3D program of your choosing, such as Maya or Blender or something like that. And then you just use that as a base to paint over it. That's exactly what I did with uh, this case. But I knew that I wanted to just tank this thing out. I want to just go crazy with it, Mad Max it, you know? So it, it's essentially, by the end of this thing, you're going to see just a crazy number of guns all over everything. Uh, don't be worried about using, or don't be reluctant to use the ruler or some of the elliptical tools. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Now, these kind of things are going to be essential if you're doing mechanical types of drawings. You, you go up here to this top bar and you can see all these different tools. And this is one I haven't covered before but it's, it's the elliptical tool. But there are also you know, some French curves and some a ruler tool. And what this does is uh, it's something where you can kind of create the shape that you want. And think of it like, um, like you're, you're creating a little stencil type of a shape. You can resize it, you can rotate it. In this case, we're kind of making some, um, some gun barrels. So you know, what I would do is I would actually kind of uh, shape it in the kind of elliptical shape that I wanted, uh, the kind of width and height that I wanted. And then uh, just using any, any of your brushes and you kind of draw near it and it almost feels like uh, one of those little uh, template stencils that you buy at an art store or something like that. And then you can move, you can of course move that around. And this is oh so important, especially if you're doing like vehicles or weapons or um, you know, kind of armor or anything that needs very kind of specific shapes. And you can use all kinds of these different curves and things like that for real precise kind of curves on things. And the neat thing is, is it'll work with whatever brush you're using, you know, whether it's a, a chisel or a, a chalk brush or, or any of those things, they'll still kind of adhere to those shapes, which is super useful. So getting back to our drawing, so we've got a lot of our, our cylinders and our, our shapes blocked in. Now we're getting into the costume design a little bit. And I didn't want to just do a costume that you've seen before. I wanted to kind of just uh, get, a little, get a little bit more creative with it. If you're not familiar, the original creator of Ghost in the Shell is a dude named Shiro Masamuni. The guy's a beast. I mean, this guy's been drawing cool cyberpunk stuff since the 80s, man. I think maybe even earlier than that with Appleseed. And he does an insane, insane level of detail. Absolutely, by all means, go check it out. But be cautious because he does a lot of kind of pervy stuff, a little bit uh, risque kind of uh, 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 stuff that's not for everyone of all ages. You know what I'm saying? While I was trying to come up with something that's a little bit different for the character, I kept thumbing through a lot of the old designs that Shiro had done because I wanted to adopt 
at least his shape language, at least the the kind of methodology of construction, the the kind of like uh, these are the sort of shapes that intersect with these sorts of materials, and um, this kind of influence, you know, for the almost <laughs> lingerie inspired leather uh, kind of uh, stockings and uh, bodysuit that she's wearing. Later, I went ahead. This is the part where I began to really tank out that Tachikoma. And I wanted to just go nuts. I wanted to go bonkers with it. I wanted to go Mad Max with it. Just guns stacked on top of guns. To some extent, it almost doesn't make sense, but it makes a pretty damn cool image, you know? This hulking tank-like form juxtaposes her tiny, almost delicate uh, body. And I also wanted to make it feel like maybe she she could fit into this thing. Maybe that uh, there's there's a couple of hatches on there uh, that you could access maybe the brain case or even, uh, I, th I believe in most of the touch comas, they have a, um, kind of a driving driver's seat in the, uh, the larger back portion. Uh, and so this is sort of the, the tank buster. This is the vehicle that, uh, you know, she'd call in when she's got to, uh, take on some pretty heavy, heavy duty mechs. And I'm almost, I mean, I, I wish so badly that uh, I could do more of this type of a thing. If you're familiar with my work, most of the designs that I do are more along the fantasy realm. Um, you know, I, I spent a lot of time working on Warcraft and Diablo. So most of my sensibilities are in this sort of medieval fantasy, this kind of dark fantasy realm. So doing something like this is a really cool departure. I did recently work on the Overwatch game, so there, there was definitely a little bit of that uh, Shiro influence uh, with the character design type of stuff that we, we've done for that. Most of the work I did on that was environmental, though. And so I didn't really get a chance to do much mechanical design or anything of that nature. This is me not necessarily doing things Shiro style and not doing things Overwatch style. This is me doing things in a kind of just the way that feels most natural to me, which is you know, pulling from my sensibilities where I was heavily inspired by Zelda and old Final Fantasy type of uh, designs and also the original source material. This is me really kind of trying to pull something that's almost sci-fi uh, whimsical fantasy. You know, it's it's an absurd level of, of guns and weaponry and it's, a, it's almost a caricature of the Ghost in the Shell kind of uh, sensibility and design works. But I, dudes, I, I know you're wondering why, why ghost in the shell? This stuff is old. This stuff is ancient. Um, well, it's not, it's not that old, but it, it is certainly, I mean, Shiro was one of those guys that I started really looking up to in my early days of doing concept art. And probably I would say like 2000 or 2001, I had moved to Los Angeles and there's a, um, there was a Japanese mall where they had a, a Kinokunya, which is a, uh, sort of a Japanese bookstore and you could go in there and you could get, I mean, at the time it was the only place where you could buy imported art books. And I was like, what is this? It's like a, it's like a comic book, but without all the story, <laughs> it was just the cool paintings from, you know, a few different artists. This is also where I picked up my first Yoji Shinkawa art book for the art of Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. I have like a first printing of that sweet puppy. And uh, these, I mean, these books are still in my collection, the old Intron Depot uh, art books by Shiro. I mean, man, you want to talk about influential. I was uh, around that period of time, I did a run on Ghost Rider at Marvel and uh, right before I started working in video games. And it was just all about pumping crazy, crazy amounts of detail into my designs. And it wasn't so much at the time about rendering a kind of a painted look. It was about just putting in really interesting design work and really interesting, uh, heavy, absurd amounts of detail into <laughs> line art detail into these, uh, kind of iconically posed character designs. So this was, this was a huge impact on me. I recently watched the, uh, ghost in the shell live action film. And, you know, I, I felt that it was probably the best script for a uh, Ghost in the Shell film, but a, I, the whole time I really had kind of hoped and wished that it would have been animated. And technically speaking, a lot of the scenes were really just uh, live action versions of scenes that had been animated in the films previously. So, 
I went back and watched all the anime films. And damn, if it isn't just cooler, the older I get. Uh, Ghost in the Shell is one of those series that you show to people to say, look, animation isn't just for kids. Uh, there's some really interesting philosophical questions that are asked. I wouldn't say that they're the strongest in terms of uh, storytelling or bringing plots back around to make any damn sense whatsoever, but they're still pretty damn cool. Uh, tips for coloring. I used a lot of uh, lighten layers to bring up some color into my line art, and then I used a lot of multiply layers to then add a little bit of color, like in the leather from her outfit, and then I used a little bit of airbrush and lighten layers to pop out a little bit more color and get that kind of gradient of blue to purple. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So there you have it. That's my uh, major Motoko Kutsunagi redesign. I did give her, I ended up giving her a lot more of an overall blue kind of a feel. I wanted to get a little bit of that watercolor vibe that Shiro does so well. Still love that guy's stuff. Just so inspiring. I popped out her hair with a little bit more purple and added a little bit of a gradient over the top. Turned out all right. Turned out not too bad. I'd love to get a poster uh, of that one. I feel pretty good about it. You may have noticed throughout this video that I have updated my Sketchbook Pro brushes. Uh, if you are interested in my tutorials or picking up my brushes or learning all of my uh, industry secrets uh, and uh, taking any of my workshops, I've got all that over on my Gumroad channel. You can swing on over there and pick that up. I've also got a uh, Art of Twilight Monk illustrated compendium that I've been working on. I've got some updates for that version three coming out soon adding some uh, bestiary uh, creature designs and monstery stuff. It's going to be cool. Uh, dudes, I think that about, yeah, that about wraps it up for me on this Ghost in the Shell piece. I want to thank Sketchbook Pro so much for just being like the, just the coolest. I would say in all of my years of drawing, um, I have not had so much fun just kind of painting fun stuff and sharing it with you guys. And these cool redesigns that I get to do, that, that would not be possible without the support of Sketchbook Pro. So go check that out. Let me help you along on your artist journey through Sketchbook Pro. That's what I'm here for. I'm like your, your art Sherpa. But most importantly, dudes, remember, if you're going to draw hot robot babes hanging out on the top of massive epic machinery, Draw hot babes hanging out on the top of epic machinery with some freaking passion, man. Yeah. Oh, that's dope.